today we finally got a little rain, and that's wonderful. We needed a gentle rain. We're so glad to see you this morning. I want you to get ready to, to join in in worshiping by singing uh, the hymns and the praises to the Lord. Take your hymn book as Barry comes. Well, all right, let's all stand. Hymn number 55. Hymn number 55. Some of these songs we only do for the course and we never sing them anymore, so I thought we'd sing a couple of them. <laughs> when the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Amen. Turn around and say hello to somebody this morning. Hello, brother. Morning. From the dawn till setting sun, let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Good 
morning, everybody. Good to see you. We're glad that you're here. And as we open the service this morning, I want to read this. It says, Dear Church Family, thank you so much for your generous gift and beautiful mom for my birthday. I truly do not deserve all the love uh, you show me, but I am thankful uh, always. And that is from Miss Bonnie. We appreciate it. And uh, she celebrated her 95th birthday. It makes me 94. That's when she celebrated her 39th birthday. All right. Uh, as we open in prayer this morning, let's remember to pray for uh, James Diller. Uh, had his surgery, came through well last week, Thursday, and now recovering. I think it's uh, two weeks that he has uh, cannot put any weight on his foot. So continue to pray for that. Sharon Murphy still recovering. She's got another two weeks in that boot. And then uh, gets the pins out of her foot and then another two weeks to heal. So got some time ahead. Uh, Carrie and Amy, our family down in Florida with Abby with the virus, just keep them in prayer, if you will. Brian Federline also, please keep him in prayer, physical need there. And then this morning is Loretta Fowler's last service with us. Yes, tonight she's got to pack a truck, tomorrow a trailer, and then uh, heading down to Myrtle Beach. And by the way, she has a three-bedroom home down there. So if anybody wants to go to Myrtle Beach, just call and uh, reserve a room. Just make sure there's room, all right? And that's a bed and breakfast, so you get everything, all right? But we're going to miss Miss Loretta. She's been a blessing to us for many, many years and faithful here. And so you pray for her as she makes that transition, that all things will go well. And that uh, she says she's coming back. And it's kind of like a bad penny. She'll show up every once in a while. But uh, we'll look forward to that. And uh, you keep her in your prayers. And I know she'd appreciate that. Well, let's open the service this morning in prayer, thanking the Lord for his goodness as he protects us and blesses us daily. Brother Dave Ritter, would you open the service this morning in prayer, please, sir? Yes. Amen. Thank you, sir. Well, all right. Remain standing. Hymn number 49. Hymn number 49. Meet me there. <laughs> On that happy golden shore where the faithful part no more. When the storms of life are o'er, meet me there. Where the night dissolves away into pure and perfect day. I am going home to stay, meet me there. Oh, meet me there, meet me there. Where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on that happy golden shore. Where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Here our fondest hopes are vain, dearest links are ran in twain, but in heaven no throb of pain, meet me there. By the river sparkling bright in the city of delight, where our faith is lost in sight, meet me there. Meet me there, meet me there, where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on that happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Where the harps 
notes of angels ring and the blessed forever sing in the palace of the king meet me there where in sweet communion blend heart with heart and friend with friend in a world that ne'er shall end meet me there meet me there meet me there where the tree of life is blooming meet me there <clears throat> on that happy golden shore where the faithful part no more meet me there it's funny how everybody stopped singing when i had to get a breath <laughs> you may be seated we want to remind everyone next sunday is time change sunday uh, which is a good thing because the time falls back and we get an extra hour of rest in the morning, which makes good reason for no one to be late at 945 to kick off our, our, our special Sunday, a time to rebuild where we get to Sunday school classes uh, going uh, back uh, next week. And so it's just be an exciting time for us. There's a list of all the Sunday school classes that we have at this time as we get started off here in this uh, uh, kind of a new temporary Sunday school plan that we'll be having. So be here to kick it off next Sunday morning at, for Sunday school. And then of course our regular church time. And then right after church service we'll be having a um, dinner here on the grounds where the church will be providing the um, chicken and then we'll be asking some others to uh, bring some other foods as well. And then we'll have an early afternoon service for our evening service. So plan on being here. Please make sure as well that you sign up uh, out uh, in the hallway to put your name down. Be in here next week so we know how, many, how much chicken to make sure we have enough and food for everyone. Please make notice also in the bulletin that we've been talking about the memorial service for Miss Susie Call. Uh, who passed away back in May. And that is going to be on Thursday, November 12th at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, of course, some of her co-workers will be coming. We do pray that you'll pray as we know that her desire is to see uh, people get saved. And I know that would be a great honor, glory to her. Uh, for for the Lord, uh, for that to happen. And so, you know, Miss Susie was always one that would be always first to sign up to do something, to get involved in everything. So let's uh, honor her in a good way by doing everything we can to be here on that Thursday. It'd be a great testimony also uh, for the co-workers as well. And please be praying for the pastor as he prepares for that memorial service. And then also um, coming up on Saturday evening, November the 7th, as we kick off our family prayer time once again, uh, that's where we meet here in the auditorium. We take our prayer requests and then we divide the men and the ladies up separate. And that's at six o'clock that we meet. And then our church fellowship, uh, we have planned for this evening. It's been a good while we, where we've really been able just to get together and fellowship. And so we're planning that tonight. The church is going to provide uh, the drinks and the hot dogs. And so then just bring some other finger foods to share uh, with other people uh, for tonight. And just plan on having a good time of fellowship right after the evening service. And then for seasoned saints dinner, for all those that are 55 and over, as we kick that off, off again uh, in November, and that first Monday evening is November the 2nd, 6 o'clock p.m., and so we're planning on being this November, having like our Thanksgiving meal where the church will provide uh, the turkey, and then we ask everyone else that signs up to bring along a side dish to go along with the meal, and there is a uh, sign-up sheet out in the hallway that we ask you to sign up for, kind of take a look at the list, what people are bringing, and then try to make sure we have enough of everything uh, that would come complete that meal. So please make sure you mark that down your calendar. Men's prayer vex breakfast once again starting off again on Saturday morning November 7th uh, we meet upstairs at 8 o'clock and we'll be at the gathering place for this and then uh, we have a good meal. The ladies fix a great meal and then we have take prayer requests and we're challenged from God's word. So let's kick it off men, teenage young men. Let's all be there uh, as we kick this off on November the 7th. And then please make sure you mark on your calendar November 24th for our Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, that will be coming up. We'll have more details coming up soon. But please, just as we do every year, we like to uh, those that God has given the abilities to sing, uh, to do a special, and then as well... Uh, 
play an instrument if you'd like, maybe even do a poem or something. But if you'd like to have part of that program, please make sure you see Brother Barry as he puts that list together. And I know that's always a good time of encouragement. And then as we give praises to the Lord uh, for what goodness that he has uh, shown uh, to each and every one of us as we'll be given our testimonies. And then remember that does take the place of our Wednesday evening service for that week. But more importantly, make sure you get signed up out in the hallway. Check out all the sign-up sheets. I'm sure I've missed a couple. Uh, get signed up. It's very important in our planning uh, that we do with all these activities. Thank you. As we open up uh, next Sunday and start getting back into a normal routine, I want to speak to the folks that are at home watching by the uh, internet uh, and a live stream. Let me encourage you. I, uh, I don't believe there's been one person in the last few weeks that we've been opening up our Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night services that we've had anybody contract the virus. Uh, we're doing everything we can to keep as safe as we can. And I'm going to encourage you not to let that be the excuse to keep you home next Sunday morning. We're trying to get back into a normal routine. We want to get all of our folks back. And we're so glad that we have people coming back today. And uh, let me encourage you, if you're home watching, uh, make the effort uh, to come out next Sunday morning. We'll have Sunday school starting at 945 and then our normal morning service at 1045. And I believe it'll be good to get back into a routine again. Amen. And so let's work to do that. And then let me encourage you today, if you received a bulletin, probably you had one of these in the bulletin. It is a brand new door hanger, and this is what we're going to start uh, handing out uh, in the next couple of weeks, getting together as a church and going out and doing this. But the reason we put one in there today is what I'd like you to do is take that this week, maybe a neighbor, maybe a family member, maybe a co-worker or somebody, uh, give this to them along with an invitation to come next Sunday. Amen. And if we all did that, think about what would happen if all of us could just get one person to come and to sit with us. We'd have the auditorium full starting off the Rebuild Sunday. So let's make that an effort. Let's make that a, a reality. Don't forget to please take some time this week and call somebody that we're missing, that you know has been a member here and coming uh, until the virus hit, uh, encouraging them to come back and letting them know that we miss them. Amen. And we want them back into our, our fellowship. So let's work together to see many hands make light work. Amen. And if all of us do something, we can see some great results. Amen. God bless you. All right. Very nice. All right. Let's take our hymnal and turn to 56. And of course, let's all stand. <laughs> when we all get to heaven. <clears throat> Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory yeah. while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will overspread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sign when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what 
What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be home. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. Great singing. You may be seated this morning. I do want to mention uh, last Wednesday night, we voted to send $1,000 to uh, Brother Corey Myers uh, there in uh, Spain uh, in the purchase of a new building. And he's already sent back a, a, an email to me thanking the church. What a blessing that is. And so just continue to pray for them. And then this morning, I got an email for, or a, a text from Jonathan and Rachel Lyons. Uh, who's uh, the vice president of Baptist Missions. Uh, Rachel's dad for the last few uh, weeks uh, has been uh, very sick uh, with uh, cancer. And uh, they said that uh, uh, he had gone home to be with the Lord this morning. And so just pray for the Lions family uh, and the family uh, during this time, and I know they would appreciate your prayers. Amen. All right. Well, this is a new group. It's not a good-looking group, but it's a new group. <laughs> and so you listen as they sing this morning. Could it be that up in heaven God is sitting on his throne Anticipating another sinner Will soon become his own Years of wasted living And years of toil and strife Are just about to be over As he receives the gift of life Go sound the horn, strike up the choir, a sinner is saved, saved from the fire, no more in darkness, he's received my son, all heaven rejoices, that's the value of one. The Holy Spirit has been working to soften up a heart. All he needs is a willing servant to simply do his part. Can you imagine up in heaven the joy there is that day? As a sinner bows his head to pray, can you hear the Father say? Sound the horn, strike up the choir, a sinner is saved, saved from the fire, no more in darkness, he's received my son, all heaven rejoices, that's the value of one, all heaven rejoices. That was good. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> Amen. No, I enjoyed that. That was good. It's like rose, the rose between thorns. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to the book of John chapter 15, if you will. John chapter 15, as we continue in the great I am statements of the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of John. This is the last statement 
that we find in the book of John. The next one is in the book of Revelation. But this one is uh, the one that we're going to look at this morning. John chapter 15. We're going to start in verse number one. Read the first eight verses so you follow along. Jesus, of course, is speaking. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Let's pray. Father, once again, we're thankful for this time together. Thank you for the privilege that we have of being able to have the Word of God in our hands. And then, Lord, to be able to have the Holy Spirit to guide us into the truth. And so today I pray that you would help us in the next few moments as we look at this passage of Scripture. And Lord, I pray that you would speak through me this morning. Give me that which I need to have, uh, a fresh anointing, a fresh uh, unction, uh, a touch from the Holy Spirit. And then as I yield to that Holy Spirit, that you might uh, speak in through us to see great and mighty things done. Help us, Lord, today to be better for you uh, as we leave than when we came in this morning. Thank you already for what you do. We ask your blessings now. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As I mentioned earlier, with this passage of Scripture, the, we are at the last I am statement that we find in the book of John. Jesus spoke these words, the I am statements, I believe, to as more of an evidence that he is the almighty God of the Old Testament. One of the, uh, with the, one with the heavenly father and of course the Holy Spirit as well. The vine is one of three uh, trees that symbolized the nation of Israel. And as we look at this passage, I believe that we must do so with a great caution when it is applied, uh, when we apply its teachings to the individual Christian. There is, let me listen to me now, listen, there is an erroneous teaching concerning that falling away and that pruning uh, which espouses the idea that one can lose their salvation. May I say that's not true. Amen. Amen. Once saved, always saved. Amen. And uh, you cannot lose your salvation. And we're going to look at this in just a moment. But in the Old Testament... We find that this vine symbolized Israel as a nation. In the New Testament, the vine represents and the branches represent and is viewed in concerning the church. Israel, having failed in its mission, the Lord now turns to the disciples and states that he is now that vine. God now has a new instrument in the New Testament time a new nation, for carrying out his purpose in this age. And that, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. So then, when Jesus said, I am the true vine, what does that mean for us? What does that pertain to us in the day in which we live? Well, let's start right off by saying that as a true vine, Jesus is our essential connection. Look at verse number one. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. 
Jesus is our essential connection to this eternal life. Amen. We have to have that connection. It's not just knowing about him. It's accepting him and trusting him as our savior. And once we do, we become a part of that vine. We are now a branch grafted into that vine. Jesus Christ is the only possible connection that one can have for eternal abundant life. Amen. In the Old Testament at certain times during the year, Jewish law required that people uh, were to bring offerings of wood uh, to the temple. And that wood, of course, would be used to keep the uh, altar going and all the rest. But they were restricted in bringing uh, vines uh, to the as wood offering. And the reason is, is because they were so uh, soft that they would burn too quickly and not provide the heat that was needed uh, to do it. So the only thing that was good for the those branches that were pruned, and if you've ever seen a vineyard, every year those vineyards have to be pruned all the way back so that the new vine and the new branches can produce that fruit and draw the strength from it. And so they had to prune them every year. And the only thing that those uh, branches that were uh, pruned off were good for was to be thrown into a bonfire and simply destroyed. And uh, so uh, that's exactly what we find here in this example. Uh, this is the real picture of what our lives would be like without the Lord Jesus Christ. Without him, we would be nothing more than destroyed into the fires of hell. Amen. But I'm glad that he is that connection that is so vital that we need to have that grafts us into that vine that gives us that life and not only life, but abundant life. Without him, the Bible says, of course, a little further down that we can do nothing. And certainly without him, we have nothing. Jesus is essential, the essential connection to life, just as the branch must stay connected to the vine and draw from that vine the necessary things for life, so must we stay connected to the Lord Jesus Christ to have that. And the way is, once I'm connected, I can't be disconnected, but I can certainly starve off what I need to have. And so I need to stay vital for the Lord. So as the true vine, he is our essential connection. We need to be connected to him. Then as the true vine, Jesus also is essential for our cleansing. Look at verse number two. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Uh, there's a lot to speak here about salvation in those little verses. First, it comes through the person, and we realize that our salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ, as I've just mentioned. Just as I have spoken, there must be a personal connection, a personal relationship with Jesus in order to be saved. Folks, let me tell you something. All around the world today, people think that they're going to heaven for many different reasons. Churches are filled today with people who are going through some ceremony, some kind of an act, some kind of a thought pattern that is totally away from the Word of God, and they think that by doing such and such, they're going to go to heaven. Unless there is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ based upon faith and faith alone, that person's not going to heaven. And I want you to realize that we need to be, uh, this, that's the whole key about why we're going to be handing out those door hand, uh, hangers. We're going to be inviting people to come to church. That's why we're trying to get back to a normal sense of service again. Because people all around our community need to have the gospel preached to them. Amen. And that's why. There's, we need to be that, and we need to have the connection, that personal relationship, and it comes through that person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then secondly, of course, we realize that it comes through the Word of God. Look at verse number three. Now ye are clean through the Word which I have spoken 
unto you. I want you to realize the word tells us of our need of salvation. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. That's why we just did those scripture assembly is to hand out the word of God to a lost and dying world. If they don't have the word of God, they're never going to understand what is needed. And that's why the word of God is important to us as Christians. We need to read the word so that we can stay clean for the word. Amen. For the Lord Jesus Christ. As I read through the Bible, it, it tells me where I'm failing, where I'm faltering, but it gives me the instruction of how to live for the Lord and make it uh, 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 my life to be uh, exactly what he wants me to be. And so the word of God is important and it comes through the, the word of God. And then we're clean through the word. Aren't you glad today that as you read through the word of God, you can find those things that you need to take out of your life and you find the things that you need to put into your life to help you to be pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then salvation had to be paid, as we know, by uh, the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And these words were spoken by the Lord, of course, just hours before he went to the cross. Look at verse number 13, if you will. I didn't read that, but it says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Think about this, as Jesus was telling the disciples about the vine and all the importance of being connected to the Lord and, and being cleansed through the word and sticking with him and, and uh, maintaining that relationship, the cross was on his mind. The cross was there before him, but it did not stop him from caring about us and caring about them. The Lord never really cared and was concerned about his own well-being. He was always concerned about the well-being of others. And he's demonstrated here. God loves us more than we can ever think about love. Amen. You know, when I think of my wife, I love her. I love her dearly. I'm so thankful that the Lord gave me uh, her as my helpmeet in life. But I want you to realize that in comparison to my love to her, I can't fathom how much God loves me. He, he loves me so much that he went to the cross and died, suffered so that I could have eternal life. What a joy it is to have that wonderful, wonderful uh, assurance of my salvation. And then as the true vine, Jesus gives us here an essential command. Look at verse number four. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. That word abide means to stay. It means to dwell. It means to continue. It means to remain. That's where I'm supposed to be. And let me tell you something. Um, that's why when we get back to this idea, you say, how important is church? It's a part. It's important to the Lord because he said, forsake not the assembling. We're to be together in this idea. Church is important to, to the worship and the praise of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I can do that personally. Yes, I can do that on my own. I can sing a hymn out in, the, in my shower in the morning when nobody hears me. I can sing it out in the back room. I can pray wherever I want to. But the Lord said there is an importance upon gathering together collectively to worship him. And we are to remain. We're not to let things take us away. It bothered me when we closed the church because we had to, supposedly because of the virus. It bothers me today that we still can't have all the programs and we're going to because I want to get back. Amen. Amen. Jesus is telling us here, and in order for us to grow, to mature in our Christian faith, to become fruitful in our Christian life, we are to stay close to him. We're to abide in him. You know, the problem is, if we aren't faithful to the Lord, if we're not faithful to the word of God, if we're not faithful in our prayer life, if we're not faithful to the church life, we will not grow and mature as we ought to as Christians. I'm one who believes this so much. I believe that every message that's preached, whether I'm preaching it or somebody else is preaching it, and it's a time when we're supposed to be together, I believe with all my heart, you are responsible for what it should have been if you're not here. Now, unless you're sick. 
But if you could have been in the service and you chose not to be in the service, then you have a, I think a, a, you're going to answer for that message. It's responsible for you. Why? Because God wants us to stay in the word of God. Amen. He desires for us to have that closer fellowship with him. You know, it's one thing, I, I, it bothers me, and, and I do this because I think it's so important. Every time I have a funeral or every time I, I have an opportunity to speak out, I always try to put salvation in it, and I give an invitation because I believe with all my heart God can use any time the Word of God is preached to bring about conviction. But the problem is, is in those contexts, you can get people to raise a hand and, and maybe pray a prayer. But what bothers me is that you don't see follow through. You see, because it's one thing to, to be saved. And the Bible says, yet so as by fire. In other words, they're going to get to heaven if they're truly saved. But they're not going to rejoice as much as somebody who's been faithful in the word, faithful to the church, faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. And growing and maturing in their life. Amen. God doesn't expect us to stay infants. When you had your children, if you have children, you brought that little baby home, and yes, it was cute, and yes, it was sweet, and yes, it did take a lot of work to get them to grow beyond that infant stage, but the whole purpose was if that child stayed an infant, after a little while, you'd get concerned about that, wouldn't you? You want that child to grow up. You want that child to become an adult. You want that child to become a valuable part of the ministries and of the church and of the community. That's your desire. That's your hope. By the way, in my case, I'm looking at my kids as my retirement plan. I want them to make a good living. So they can take care of me. <laughs> but anyway... And I think to myself, when the Lord gives salvation to somebody, and he, we all start off in our Christian life as an infant, amen? Babes in Christ, the Bible says. But God doesn't expect us or desire us to stay an infant. Through the word of God, through the preaching of the word, through prayer, through fellowship. It is a time of maturing. He wants us to grow. And how do we do that? We must abide in him. Remain. Continue. Dwell. That's what we're supposed to do. Look at verse number seven. It says, if ye abide in me, now listen to this. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. I read a little story here just this last week about a girl, a little girl who bought a goldfish. When she brought it home, her mother asked her, said, uh, what, we're, what are you going to name that goldfish? The little girl replied and says, oh, it already has a name. Sparingly. Mother, kind of confused, said uh, why she thought that that goldfish had that name sparingly. To which the little girl handed her uh, the piece of paper with the instructions that came as she bought the fish. And it said, Feed sparingly once a day. You know, too many Christians are feeding sparingly. We're not feasting on the word of God. We're not abiding as we ought to abide. If the only time you think of God is on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night when you come to church, you're not abiding. If the only time you open your Bible is Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night in church, you're not abiding. You're not growing. You're not maturing. And I think one of the problems that we have today in our nation is that we have a lot of people who might be saved. I, I don't know. Uh, I know we're not a, 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 where we ought to be in our nation, but the problem is, is that they're not feasting. We've got church services now that appeal to the flesh rather than to the spirit, and you're not going to mature when your flesh is being fed. You need to mature when your spirit's being fed. Amen. 
You know, I found this to be true, that when you hang around someone long enough, much of the thoughts and much of the actions of that other person rub off on you. Isn't that true? You hang around with somebody that complains all the time and finds fault with everything and nothing seems to please them and you hang around them. It won't be long before you'll start adapting that same thought. You start looking at the things they look at it and the way they look at it. And before long, you'll start to complain. And then you feed off each other. And the next thing you know, you've got problems. By the same token, if you hang around somebody who's always positive and says only the good things and, and uh, excited about whatever and, and all the rest, you know, it's not long before you start to look at the same thing. Well, the whole key here is that if you abide, stand up here, would you please, right here. He's Jesus. If I want to have his thoughts, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. If I want to have the mind of Christ, if I want to have the thoughts of Christ, if I want to have the burdens of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I need to spend some time abiding with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because when I spend time in the Word of God and in prayer and abiding with Him in every area of my life and I start to relinquish Jim Moore and take on the Lord Jesus Christ, then I start to truly mature in my life They become what He wants me to be in my life. Thank you, maybe see. You know why we're missing missionaries today? We got more missionaries coming off the field than we have going to the field. You know why we've got so many churches, good, solid, independent, fundamental Baptist churches in America today that are uh, without a pastor is because of the fact that we are living for what I want instead of what God wants. We haven't abided in Christ long enough to understand that what God's will is and I'm relinquishing my will over to his will. I'm 72 years old. It's not going to be long before I'm not going to be able to stand behind a pulpit and preach. I hate that. But the fact is that somebody's got to stand in the place and be willing to stand. And the only way we can do that is when I stand and abide in the Lord Jesus Christ and I can relinquish over myself to his will, to his plan, to his purpose and say, God, this is what you want. I'm going to do it. It bothers me that people won't contribute to the church. People stand back and say, well, let somebody else serve. Let somebody else do the work. I'll just sit back and take the blessings of it. Why? Because they're not abiding in Christ. They aren't maturing in Christ. They aren't growing in Christ. And they aren't having the mind of Christ to realize that I have been saved for a purpose. And it's his purpose, not my purpose. That's what Jesus is saying here. You can't do anything without him. I can't do anything, but I can't teach, I can't preach, I can't, I can't live the Christian life, I can't give my tithes and expect that he's going to meet my needs. I cannot do anything without him. That's why I need to stay close to him. Because I need his power in my life, I need his provisions in my life, I need his presence in my life. Verse number five, look at it. Look at that whole verse. He says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. The branch draws its vitality. It draws its life from the vine. Then he says in verse number five, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth. What kind of fruit? Little fruit. Small fruit. Insignificant fruit. No, oh, much fruit. Much fruit. If I was abiding in Christ as I ought to abide in Christ, 
and drawing from him his will, his direction, his plan, his power, his presence, then the whole key is that I would not just go through life and say this is all there is, but I would be good getting more mature, more blessings, more power, more opportunities. I would see God give me some much fruit. Why? Verse number five, for without me, you can do nothing. We got a lot of Christians who are trying to do something, but they're trying to do it in their power and their flesh, their ability, and they just can't do it. We need God's power in our life. There's a great difference between, now listen to this. There's a great difference between working and fruit bearing. Did you understand that? There's a great difference between just putting out something. Uh, I had a, sir, a funeral just a couple of weeks ago for the Green family. And I, I went there, prepared a message, prayed about it, asked God to help me. I went there and I worked at it. I did. I preached. And by the way, when I preach, I try to put some emphasis in it. Amen. This is an, a, an exercise. I, I'm not one who can stand behind a pulpit and just in a monotone voice, just read something or give you something. I've got to have the power of God and the, uh, and the freedom to move. That's the way God created me. And I don't want to ever stop that. But the fact is, is when I preach, I want to see something happen. It's work. It's labor to preach the word of God. I sweat up here. I put out some energy up here. And I'm on a diet right now. And I'm burning calories right now. <laughs> but the fact is, is there's a difference between the working and the fruit bearing. And I don't want to do the work if I'm not going to see fruit. There's a difference between it. People can work a bus route, but are they producing fruit from the bus route? People can teach a Sunday school class, but not just work at the teaching of a Sunday school class, but producing fruit in the lives of young people. There's a difference. And how do we get that difference? Without me, you can do nothing. It takes the Lord to turn our work into fruit bearing. Then I want you to notice, as the true vine, Jesus gives an extraordinary commitment here in verse number seven. If he abide in me, oh, this is important. Now, don't miss this. If he abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Now, I want you to realize here, there is a condition. I've heard people say, well, the Bible says that if you ask, and whatever you ask, he'll do it. No, there's a condition. And the condition is, is if I abide in Christ, and his words abide in me, then I have the promise that whatsoever I shall ask, I'll receive. You see, the key here is not me best being a Christian and God owes me something. God owes us nothing. But the key is, is that if I abide in Christ, can I say something that might offend somebody? I'm going to say it anyway, it doesn't matter. It bothers me that people will not tithe to the church. Jesus spoke on tithing. Tithing was instituted before the law. I get people saying, well, that was under the law. It's not under the grace. No, it was before the law even came into being. It was emphasized under the law. But it was approved by the very word of God. That's abiding in Christ. 
And I can't understand when people don't tithe, when they aren't willing to show their faith in the Lord and, and say, I'm going to give back a little bit and trust the Lord to meet my needs. That's an act of faith. And then problems come into their life. People get sick, uh, cars break down, whatever it happens. And they don't understand why is all this happening? I'll tell you why. Because you're not abiding in Christ. And if you're not tithing, if you're not faithful, if you're not praying, if you're not growing, if you're not maturing, don't expect God to answer your prayer. There's a condition. And God doesn't owe me anything. So, well, I was in church. How come God didn't answer my prayer? Because you're not abiding. You're not continuing. You're not following the word of God. That's an amazing promise that we have here. Listen to me, folks. You say, look at America. Oh, it's so wicked. How are we ever going to get America back? I'll tell you how we're going to get America back. When we get Christians to truly abide in the Lord Jesus Christ and let his word truly abide in them, then when we pray, God will answer. Over and over again. The Lord answers our prayers. He does that. He gives us food to eat every day. Man, more food than I can stand. Well, no. But a lot of food. He gives me air to breathe. Amen. Isn't he a good and gracious God? He gives me health that I can get up and move at 72 years old. Listen, I, I, I had a heart attack uh, uh, two years ago. And yesterday and uh, on Friday... I had two young men come and help me, and we, we took 11 yards of topsoil from my driveway, took it to the back, dumped it all out, spread half of it. Yesterday, my wife and I got up, and we spread out the other half of it. I was tired, yes, and I'm a little sore this morning, and all the rest of it, but you know what? I have a good and gracious God. Amen. God's able to answer my prayers. God answers and gives me that health I need to have to accomplish what needs to be done. I'm so glad that I have a God like that. Oh, am I perfect? Oh, no, I wish I was, but I'm not and I never will be on this side of heaven. But I'm striving to be the best I can be. In the midst of all the trials and the troubles, I want you to know he gives me peace and direction. I've got people that will not come to church because they're too afraid that, oh, somebody's going to contaminate me. I want you to realize I have not worried one bit about getting the virus. I'm not worried about it because if I'm going to get it, it's God's will that I get it. Amen. Now, I'm, not, I'm not dumb. I'm not going to take chances. I, I put a mask on when I go into a store. And I use a little hand sanitizer as well in, in times. I'm not going to tempt the Lord my God. But I'm not going to stop living. Because I'm the Lord's. Amen. And he can do with me as he sees fit to do. If he wants to give me the virus, there's a reason for it. And so the fact is, is I can bundle up and quit. And I can hibernate. And, hibernate? Hibernate. <laughs> I just created a new word. <laughs> you see, the key to answered prayers are continual abiding in him. Staying close to him. Letting his words dwell in us. When my desires becomes his desires, then I can ask for those desires, and he'd be glad to give them to me. The problem is, is when I want my desires, which are against his desires. Amen? That's why I need to stay in the word. See, that's what he's telling us here. He's telling us here that if ye abide in me, you stay close to me, you, you walk with me, you commune with me, you fellowship with me through reading your Bible in prayer, and you, I, I'm... I'm uh, giving you, uh, the Lord's giving me what I need to have on a daily basis. He's giving me that as I abide in him and then his words abide in me. I'm going to know that my prayer is in accordance to his will. 
And then when I pray, it's just like me going to my dad. And if he was saying to, to my mother when I was a boy, if he said to my mother, you know, Jim's been good. He's been, uh, that'd be different, but he's been good and he's mowed the lawn and he's done some things. And, and uh, I just think I need to give him a, a, a $20. Now, I know $20 may not be a lot now, but boy, back when I was a boy, 20 bucks was a lot. Back in the dark ages when nobody had fun. And uh, so he'd already discussed it. And so I'm upstairs and I'm saying, boy, I sure would like to, uh, I don't know, buy something. But man, that's $20. And I don't have $20. I guess I could go ask my dad. I've got a need. His will is that he's going to give me 20 bucks. I go down and I say, dad, can I talk to you? And he says, sure, son. What do you need? I said, well, I got this desire. I'd like to have this thing, and, but it's $20, and I don't have it. But it sure would make my life happy. I wonder, could you spare 20 bucks? Dad reaches into his wallet and says, son, you got it. You see, he already has agreed to what he was going to give me. That's what God wants to do. When I have the mind of Christ, I have the will of Christ, I have the words of Christ, then truly as I'm closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, it allows me to know what his desires are for me, what his will is for me. And now I can pray in accordance to that and I will see those prayers answered. Jeremiah 33.3 Call on to me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Boy, I'd like to see some great things, wouldn't you? I'd like to see some things that I think are impossible. I'd like to see this auditorium filled up. I'd like to see somebody get saved every service. I'd like to see our baptismal water stirred. I'd like to see God work in a wonderful way and just spread the gospel out into our community. What a mighty and wonderful thing and it can happen with the Lord God wants to amaze us you ever think of that God wants to amaze us he wants to do things that we think are impossible and the key is abiding in him and abiding in his words and then lastly as the true vine Jesus can bring us to an Excellent conclusion. Look at verse number eight. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Jesus can bring us to a life full of fruit, and not for our glory, but to the glory of God. Amen. Whatever we accomplish, we accomplish it <coughs> for the glory of God, not for ourselves. You know, I think that's one of the problems. I think one of the problems is, well, we got to build our church so that people can think I'm a great preacher. We got to fill the aisles up and the pews up and, and uh, have an overflow crowd. And then they're going to think, man, we are really great. No, it's not for us. It's for God. <coughs> Excuse me. As we labor and as we work, let's remember that we're not working for ourselves. We're working for him. We're co-laborers together. Amen. So what kind of fruit now does God want us to bear? <coughs> he wants us, I think, first of all, to bear holiness and goodness. Be ye holy, for I am holy. We're to be more like him. I think he wants us to have fruit through our financial giving. As we give, God can use that <coughs> to further his gospel. <coughs> I think he wants us to have fruit of a heartfelt praise to God. We're to praise him. And the more I praise him, the more I love him. And then, of course, I think he wants us to have the fruit of another Christian. 
winning somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the fruit that God wants us to bear. So let me ask you today, are you connected to the vine? Do you know that you're connected? That there's been a time when you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you abiding in that vine? Are you staying close? Are you dwelling? Are you remaining? Are you continuing? Do you walk and talk with the Lord? Through prayer, through Bible reading. And then, are you bearing fruit? Let me ask you something. <coughs> not to brag on you. Not to boast on you. But are you a better Christian today than you were last year at the same time? Are you more in love with the Lord today than you were a year ago? Are you more involved in serving the Lord today more than you were a year ago? That's what God wants us to do is to have fruit in our lives. So the question is for you. Are you what God wants you to be? Father, I thank you today for this time together. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for what you have shown us as the true vine. And Lord, your desire is, of course, that we abide in you, that we dwell, remain, stay close, connected. That, Lord, through that connection, through that fellowship, through that relationship, we individually can mature, we can grow, we can become more like you, less like the world. And that, Lord, we can achieve some things that we can't even fathom for the glory of God. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help us today to look at our lives. And I believe because of the crowd today, I would say that most of us, if not all, are connected to the vine. But how are we abiding? How are we growing? How are we maturing? So help us, Lord, to look at ourselves and to see what do I need to do to become more of what you want, to see greater things accomplished. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And I wonder, just for my sake, how many of us know for sure that I've trusted Christ, that I'm saved and on my way to heaven. Here's my hand as a testimony that I have trusted the Lord and know that I'm saved. God bless you. Thank you. You may put them down. Now, out of you that just raised your hand, I wonder if there's some that would be honest and say, Preacher, there's just some area in that message that God spoke to my heart about. And I realize that I need to maybe mature in that one area to grow. And I know that maybe I need to abide a little more. Maybe I need to just let his words abide in me more. Dwell upon it. Meditate on it. And preacher, I wonder today, would you just be my friend and pray for me? Here's my hand all over the building today. God bless you. Many hands this morning. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for your honesty. Anyone else before we pray? Here's my hand. Pray for me, preacher. I want to be more like you, Lord Jesus. I want to be more uh, uh, inviting. God bless you. Abiding. I want to be more uh, uh, allowing your words to abide in me. Whatever it is, here's my hand. Just pray for me, preacher. Then let me ask this, and I don't know if... But I wonder if there's one here today that say, you know, I'm not sure I'm connected. I don't know for sure that I can have that vitality, that energy, that everything the Lord wants to give me because I've been connected. But would you please, preacher, just be my friend and pray for me that I could get this thing settled and know for sure. No one's looking but me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. But preacher, here's my hand. Would you just pray for me? Anyone like that in the building this morning? I'm not sure that I am connected. Father, I thank you today for Jesus. I thank you for your love and your goodness and your grace. I thank you that you care enough for me, that you allowed me to be connected to that vine that allows me to have everything I need in this life to serve you and then Lord to know that I have a greater life awaiting now Lord I pray for every hand that's been raised this morning I don't know the needs but you do you don't know the areas that maybe there needs to be some help in but you do 
And so I pray that the hand raised would not just be taken lightly, but that there would be a follow through with it, that God, you might work as only you can. And Lord, we be careful always to praise you and to thank you for all that you are and all that you're doing. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes closed. Let's stand to our feet. In just a moment, Barry's going to come and lead us in a stanza of invitation. And if you need to come, the altars are open. Why don't you let Jesus be the lead in your life right now? As we begin to sing, you do what God wants you to do, would you please? Are you uh, waiting or are you moving as God directs?